welcome those who are present. We are with Mr. Vishnu Vardhan. As you know, he's one of the top players to come out of uh, Hyderabad, Telangana, also known as Andhra Pradesh before. So uh, he's been uh, representing India in the Davis Cup, uh, Olympics, Asian Games, won quite a few medals as well in uh, some of those meets. And obviously, he's also been a top 100 doubles player. He ranked as high as 262, if I'm correct, in the singles. And um, obviously, he's done a lot for tennis as well locally in the city. You know, he's helped ITL over the years. Um, he did a, uh, a uh, tennis camp with us for three days back in 2017, I believe. And uh, we've had quite a long relationship with him. So welcome to the program. Mr. Vardhan. Okay, nice. Hi, uh, uh, I've known Haider and uh, know of her quite some time now and uh, I've uh, worked a little bit with ITL earlier in the past also and uh, happy to be here uh, in these tough times. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to those who have joined, uh, please, if you want, you can uh, type out your questions in the chat window and we will get to them uh, once our session's over. So uh, let me get started with asking you, first of all, how are you keeping up? Uh, I mean, how are you doing so far in the lockdown, in, the, in this worldwide pandemic? And uh, how are you keeping yourself in uh, tune mentally as well as in shape? Uh, so if you could give us a few insights into what's your daily routine. I mean, it was, uh, it was a sudden surprise. I was actually in the middle of a tournament and they had canceled. Uh, the tournament and immediately took the next flight out. Uh, luckily, I didn't travel anywhere abroad since Jan uh, this year, so I didn't have to, uh, you know, I didn't have that funny sticker outside my house that I'm going to be quarantined or self quarantined for 14 days, so that was okay. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, for me personally, it's been really good because I'm always traveling, I'm always outside home, away from family, so this, this time has given me. Uh, 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 valuable moments with my family which i'm you know going to cherish uh, but yeah the first uh, one week 10 days was very haphazard i mean uh, uh, didn't know what to do because i'm if i'm home i'm always out training or doing something uh, just being at home uh, everything went for a toss i would sleep really late wake up really late my food timings were off i didn't know really what to do at home there would be one day that i would train a lot then three four days doing nothing so after about one week uh, one week, 10 days, I decided that, you know, I'm going to set a routine for myself. And uh, because I felt that it, this is not going to go soon, it's going to take a while before uh, things resume in its normal pace. So I made my uh, myself a routine uh, where I at least work out uh, a minimum of two hours a day, at least one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. That's like a minimum. Some days it's more. Apart from that, uh, I would do a lot of reading. And mm -hmm. of course, I would uh, spend time, uh, you know, watching movies, which uh, I don't really get to watch a lot when I'm uh, yeah. traveling. So yeah. uh, Netflix has been having a lot of documentaries which I'm going through. So, uh, yeah, so these are some things that I've been doing. And uh, some specifics that I've been uh, doing was uh, I've always been a very stiff guy and always interested in yoga. So I've been spending a lot of time uh, uh, following some YouTube channels, doing some yoga work. Uh, and I don't know if you're aware of uh, Sivananda, the, the the yoga ashram in Madurai. It's one of okay. the best in the world. So they had offered, uh, they've been offering like free uh, online courses uh, mm -hmm. for pranayam in the morning and yoga later in the evening. So I've been uh, uh, using that uh, as well. And uh, live in an independent house. So there's an open terrace for me. So I'm trying to do a little bit whatever I can uh, on my terrace, it's not really uh, uh, improving, I would say, but my main goal is to maintain my fitness. I'm not right, really yeah. looking at uh, making major strides in fitness at the moment. I'll be very happy even if I can maintain my strength, aerobic endurance. Okay, that's great. Um, so, yeah, more people are joining us. And uh, now, I mean, obviously, the entire tennis community has been affected by um, uh, by the pandemic, and a lot of people who are like, especially the players that are lower ranked, two fifty and below. Like, I mean, we've been hearing in the news, you know, they've been affected by the sport. I mean, by the by the pandemic, and 
obviously they can't play. So when they can't travel, they don't play. They don't get a paycheck, even if you know, the, even if they go out in the first round. Maybe sometimes they stay for two weeks uh, going forward. So how do you think? What do you think will be the long-term effects of the, the pandemic on the sport? Like how quickly will players be able to get back into the swing of things? And yeah, I mean, uh, from the uh, players' point of view, uh, it's it's been a little tough. There's no tournaments to play, and uh, uh, yeah, for the lower rank players, anyways, they are not really making any money off uh, playing tennis. It's more of a break-even situation that they have been uh, going through, and of course, ATP, WTA, they are trying to uh, uh, make uh, some decisions uh, uh, in discussion with ITF on how the support system can be there. Uh, for the lower rank players, so that it's easier for them to make a comeback. Uh, I think it it will certainly affect uh, uh, the course once the players come back. We we should expect to see less number of tournaments. Uh, it will be a very tricky situation on how things will be handled because uh, for sports it's very important to have uh, the footfall uh, uh, for the tournaments so that the sponsorships are raised. But uh, thanks to the technology, there will be a lot of online viewership. And uh, I'm hoping that ATP, WTA, and the ITF they come up with a, a plan where the online viewership is is increased. Uh, maybe they could install uh, uh, a live stream even for ITF and maybe junior matches also, so that people can view a lot more tennis uh, online. So that would uh, be an uh, attractive way for the sponsors to come in, and we could have more number of tournaments. But certainly the first six months would be. Uh, a tough uh, a situation where all the businesses are coming back, so it will be uh, tough to raise some sponsors. But uh, but the key would be for the players to make sure that they are able to maintain their uh, fitness. They are able to, uh, uh, yeah, not only physical fitness but mental. Hello. Yeah, like we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got that part. Um, so, uh, like, have you received any um, uh, communication from the ITF or ATP? Anything in regards to this yet, or no? So I, I mean, I, I've received an uh, email from ATP uh, last morning, uh, but they, it's just for the players. I'm pretty sure that in few days there will be an official press release regarding it uh, about uh, what they're planning to do in terms of, uh, uh, you know, having a, a support, a financial support for the players. They're still trying to figure out what rankings to go about, what, what kind of... Uh, support should be given but uh, ITF has come up with some uh, guidelines on how they are going to go about with uh, uh, matches. Uh, firstly, they would want to have some regional matches to go on so that uh, certain regions are confined within themselves. Uh, they, they plan to have uh, uh, some tennis matches where there's only singles played, doubles are going to be stopped for a while, uh, handshakes are going to be banned and different sets of balls are going to be used for the players who serve. Uh, things like that are going to be enforced so that uh, a smoother and quicker start of uh, matches can happen. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay. And uh, all right. So the other thing that I wanted to discuss today was uh, obviously we have a, uh, quite a few juniors with us. Um, uh, what would you suggest juniors today do? I mean, apart from this time that obviously they're at home, but like once it starts opening up, how right. should they prepare themselves for a career in tennis, which is going to be completely different from what it used to be, right? Because now it's a, it's a whole different uh, system that's probably going to put into place. So how should they you now take the cha uh, chance and uh, prepare themselves before things start opening up and how should they prepare themselves so that when local events do happen, which anyway, which I think they'll be few and far in between. So yeah. what, how, how do they make them the most out of that? So if you can give your insights on that, please. Uh, I mean, for, for this situation, it will be very uh, tough on, uh, uh, because I, I don't really know how it's, it's going to, what's going to happen once things open up. So it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen. But, but in general, uh, the, the, I could speak the thumb rule is that the junior, they should give equal importance to education uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, the sport that they choose to play. That's, that's very important because you have to make some crucial decisions once you cross 17, 18. You should be well equipped to make whatever decision that you want to do. 
So if you've been neglecting your education for a while, then it'll be tough to make uh, a decision getting back into education after you're 18. So that that would be key. Uh, apart from that, it's very important that you use this time uh, to to do some kind of fitness uh, at home, whatever best you can. At the same time, you've got to be very careful that you're not uh, doing anything wrong so that you're enjoying yourself because it's very easy to get, uh, very easy to overtrain because you're at home, you want to do a lot and uh, you don't really care about the surf, the kind of surface you're on uh, because I've, I've heard that some players have got injured uh, doing a lot of jumps on their terrace and uh, uh, overdoing uh, uh, the kind of core work that they've been doing uh, uh, online. So these are some cases that have uh, come across because normally when you're training in a group, the trainer is, is you know, right there seeing the, the yeah. posture you're doing or, you know, he's correcting things. But uh, uh, there's very little that you can do uh, on a live uh, 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 training session. There's very little that the trainer can uh, monitor. And especially with junior kids, you've got to be very careful. Some kids are, they want to push too much. They want to make a lot of improvement and it, it can overboard and lead to some injuries. So that's, that's very important. Uh, so the key would be again to to make sure you're maintaining your fitness, and then um, yeah, make sure that uh, you know you're apart from tennis, you're also focusing on uh, something else because you don't know how things are going to be. But uh, but on the hindsight, I'm I'm very confident that uh, uh, tennis will bounce back. Uh, uh, there will be a lot of uh, regional events. So uh, uh, AITA is also coming up uh, with a plan of having regional even regional events, which they had in the past about. 10, 12 years back, we had a zonal event. So each region had enough number of tournaments. Uh, growing up, I remember that I didn't really have to go to uh, uh, Delhi or, uh, uh, you know, uh, Northeast to play any kind of tournament. I played all the tournaments in South. There were South zonal tournaments. So uh, that could be uh, possible. There have been some internal discussions in the National Federation that there is a possibility of having some uh, uh, zonal events. Uh, so they are still working uh, on that. Uh, 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 so if that happens, then it'll be a lot more easier. Then you can have national level tournaments in your own zone. It will not be very difficult to uh, travel uh, and play matches. Right. So yeah. So again, tennis is a very global sport. Uh, internationally, it will uh, affect uh, uh, as compared to cricket, where there are you know a very few number of countries playing, and it's very easy. And only one country hosts. Uh, another country to play a match. It's very easy for a sport like cricket to make a comeback as opposed to tennis where it's a, a, a global uh, right. uh, reach. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, even though I think, like, over the past few years, like, what I've noticed is um, that there haven't been many men's ITF tournaments happening in India. But I, I think 2017 yeah. was the last time where there were, like, maybe eight or ten tournaments. And then from right. 2018, there's been nothing. So I don't know right. who, I mean, like, who do you think is that? I mean, like, what's the reason for that? Or is somebody in charge of these things? Like, how does that? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's been very sad. I mean, uh, uh, 2008, 2009 is when uh, uh, there was a good support received from the uh, Sports Authority of India to the National Federation to organize international events. So that's when they started having at least a minimum of uh, six to nine uh, ITF men's events and about uh, three to six uh, ITF women's events every year. And uh, 2014 or 16, we, we saw the maximum of about 18 uh, ITF men's tournaments that year in India. But since then, mm -hmm. year to year, there's been a reduction in the uh, ITF tournaments, which has been very sad. Uh, one of the main reasons I feel is uh, not very good communication between the Sports Authority of India, the National Federation, and the tournament organizers. So uh, th there's been a, a communication gap between these three uh, on uh, organizing the event. So I don't really know who's at, exactly at fault because I've been in touch with some uh, uh, some organizers, say, for example, uh, Trivandrum or Chandigarh, where they've been organizing ITF tournaments for the last eight to 10 years. So they are, they are very passionate about the right. sport. They want to organize these ITF events year after year. They get good support from the local state, even even Calcutta also. They've been organizing ITF tournaments for, for almost eight years. Today, they may, this year, they made a comeback, but it, it wasn't there for the last three, four years. So they have not been getting good communication support from the National Federation 
but at the same time when i have a word of the national federation they say that you know the it's been very difficult for the organizers to raise sponsors and it is not possible for the national federation to give you know uh, entire support to run the tournament they could give a partial support which is how it should be done you know they give about 30 to 50% of support and then the other support is raised from the uh, uh, is raised locally yeah mm-hmm. so there's been a communication gap and uh, uh so it's it's been tough for the players uh, uh, at one point we had so many players ranked between 800 to 1200 but now uh, there are very few players uh, in in that bracket because it's been very difficult for them to make their first atp point which is always tough and it's easier to make that mm-hmm. first atp point in india uh but i see uh, i see that there will be a change next year for sure uh, this year uh, uh anyway in beginning of this year there was a commitment to have at least uh, 9 to 12 itf tournaments in india unfortunately because of the uh, uh covid uh, it's not going to happen yeah. but uh, once we are through this i'm pretty sure that uh, next year we should be on track having enough number of itf tournaments yeah, okay um i mean this is also another i mean sorry i'm going a bit off track because i know that yeah. uh what like what do you think there isn't any sponsor interest in tennis in india particularly in india i mean it's bizarre because there's so I, many players i mean aita yeah. said that sorry i mean aita said that in their last i was watching one of their videos where they were doing online they said they have 11000 current registered members that's more than the 11 members they have in the cricket team <laughs> right so where uh, why is the money not flowing into us like can you do you have any so few things that uh, i could say i could speak from the uh, through my experiences from the government's point of view uh, uh government is not looking at sports uh, uh specifically so they have a generalized guidelines given for sports Uh, things have changed uh, in the last 5 uh, to 7 years things have changed they see racket sports separately they see uh, uh, they have they have tried to raise different sports uh, uh, so that you know more specific focus can can be given but each sport is not taken up individually so from the government's point of view what they do is they have listed out sports in different priorities so the sports which they feel that maximum a uh, number of medals they can gain let it be in asian games or olympics the first focus support would be in that so in that tennis comes in the second level so we are not the top priority in that one wrestling art history uh, uh shooting these are some of the games which are the top priority which which actually makes sense because uh, badminton now has pushed badminton was actually third in line so it has been pushed into the top priority right now so unless and until something uh, you know we we get an olympic medal it's not going to be shifted in the top priority and the second reason is that we are clubbed into racket sports so uh, when the proposal for a sponsorship for a top tennis player goes to the government it goes hand in hand with the top badminton player and the top badminton badminton player is ranked top 10 in the world already and the top uh, indian tennis player is ranked you know about 250 or 300 Uh, uh you know in in terms of requirement for sponsorship so they they compare these two saying that oh the badminton player is already in top 10 and he requires almost equal amount of money for a player who is ranked about 300 in the world so it makes a lot of sense for the government saying that you know let us support the badminton player so that he there is a chance of him becoming world number 1 as opposed to a tennis player from 250 getting into world number 1 you understand what i'm saying so right, it's, yeah. it's about it's, it's about the similar amount of money when a badminton player who's ranked about say even 30 in the world for him to become a world number one he requires about 40 50 lakhs say the same thing for a, a tennis player who's ranked about 300 so for them it it becomes very natural to support so this is the uh, thing for the government and uh, for the private sector it it becomes very hard for them uh, to have uh, a re- turn of investment you know that's how the the private companies see that there is not much visibility for the tennis players uh, uh, the first thing uh, it it mainly depends uh, on that the sponsorship or okay the last tournament that you have won how many people have uh, watched you play that final how many uh, viewers did you get online on that so these are some things that the private sponsorships look for uh so uh, unfortunately tennis is tennis in india is not having that many viewership even though there are 
one number of people playing tennis one number of players registered uh, that's um, yeah i mean we've been just in same with leave like even even with itl like we have not uh, we we have had some private sponsors come forward which i'm very very thankful for um, but apart from that um, companies or corporates they they like it's juniors what am i going to do with this so but even then you know i mean like there's like so many that we have almost like 3 to 500 uh, i mean just in a small local league in hyderabad going forward the atp and wta big news recently roger federer tweeted about it rafael nadal agreed with him <laughs> you know obviously this was a planned move by both of them uh and then uh, just two nights ago there was billy jean king from the wta and andy murray talking to christian amunpour on cnn they had like a 30 minute 20 30 minute chat where they spoke about the atp and wta merging what do you think about it i think it's it's a great idea to do it under one banner uh, uh atp and wta coming together it will be great for the fans as well uh, at the moment the way i see it is there are different uh, uh, uh audience or different viewership for both the matches i mean there is obviously they will be watching uh, men's as well the, the fans were watching women's but they would prefer to watch women's and it's more the similar is is for the men's also if there are hardcore atp watchers you know atp match watchers and then they they're just going to tune up for the semi finals or the finals for the women's so there it's just, there's a little different uh, viewership base for both and uh, uh, I, they've always been uh, uh, questions about you know okay you make Uh, more money i make more money you know or you know uh, we, let's keep it separate but i think it's time that they get together and uh, even uh, recently there was one interview uh, from the uh, atp chairman or president saying that you know we should forgive french open for whatever they have done you know we all have to work together in this tough time which is which is really great and i think that's the way going forward it will be it will be nice to have uh, atp wta tournaments coming together especially when the schedule is uh, going to be really tricky to have both the events together and and why not you know it's it's great for the fans also especially when you have atp tournaments uh, on the semi final and final day you just have one or two matches so uh, the fans have to pay a lot of money they they travel long ways just to come and if it's if the match is one sided they they have to go they they just pay a lot of money just to watch one hour of tennis but if there's a wta tournament also going on the same venue then they could get to see four matches on a semi final day or or even more even if doubles are happening then you know at least six matches on that particular day which is which is great for the fans also so i think that's the way forward and it also explore the possibility of having a mixed doubles on a, a year round basis like how it happens in badminton so uh, that that would be a uh, 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 great for uh, players who are just focusing on doubles to start focusing on mixed doubles as well just rather than just playing yeah, for four grand slams and it's another revenue stream as well for the players exactly so yeah. so i think that's that's a great idea to uh, to get together it becomes easier in terms of scheduling uh, tournaments also just to have tournaments together and it's easier for the organizers also because they are anyways spending a lot of money organizing just one atp event you know it yeah. it covers a lot of overheads for them to uh, have a wta event also alongside yeah Um, um, my cynical side you know kind of things that it will be too much uh, control of tennis into one body you know so i think it might be a, i mean you know nobody knows how it will be but uh, i hope it's uh, more uh, you know like democratic instead of uh, dictatorial oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really hope okay some rapid fire questions for you okay let's do it tennis balls yellow or green yellow for sure <laughs> for sure okay your dream doubles partner my dream doubles partner i would be andy murray andy murray okay good one okay uh, the worst night for hyderabad biryani or halim oh biryani <laughs> biryani oh that good answer good answer okay um recently you had a chat with uh, one second let me think of the name with a um, uh, with miss gayatri madkekar where yeah. you spoke about me- mental training um so you spoke of, i mean uh, that was on instagram you had a session with her um how do you suggest players incorporate mental training 
into their training? Like, is this something that they should have a separate coach for? Is this something that the coach itself should probably give them some pointers on, in which case the coach needs to be qualified for it? Or do you think this is something that they can just um, look into it like once a week or once a month or something? So what's your, you know, thought basis on that? So I've, I've been introduced to mental training very late in my career and it was very hard for me to follow certain guidelines because my mind was already conditioned to a certain way of thinking or certain way of processing uh, information. So it was very hard for me to break that barrier and then make changes. And eventually I could make some changes which helped my performance and there were some changes that I couldn't do which it's been tough for me to, to handle it that way. So in, in that hindsight, I would say it is very important to have some kind of uh, uh, mental coaching from a, a very young age. Uh, even if it can be, uh, the ideal way would be that the coach is, like the tennis coach is having a fitness coach in his uh, uh, team. He's having an assistant coach in his team. Some, some tennis coaches also have a yoga trainer in their team, right. uh, a physio in their team who doesn't come every day. He's there only maybe twice a week or once a week. So in, in that way, I think for mental training, even once a week, would, would be great. And uh, the idea is to start young before uh, you, you condition your mind in a certain way. Uh, there are some players uh, from a very young age, they, they celebrate victories, but then it's very hard for them to take losses or very hard for them, for some players to motivate themselves for training. They train well when they're winning, but they when they lose, they don't want to train, things like that. So these small things can be addressed from a very young age, right attitude and good habits can be formed from a very young age if mental training is incorporated uh, in your training routine. And uh, the way I see it is, is the muscle and you know, the more you train it it's, it, it's going to get stronger. You're going to get mentally tougher, not just for your sport, but just to handle even if once a week or once is a uh, a certified mental trainer or an NLP coach, it will, it will certainly help uh, going forward. Yeah. Um, I mean, as you know, I, I am a certified mental coach. Uh, right. I did that certification last year. And the one thing that they uh, taught us is that, um, right, I mean, I agree with you that, you know, we should incorporate it into training. And, but they do it, uh, what they said was that it has to be done basically on a daily basis. If you can, okay. And okay. Uh, the best age to start is from the age of eleven and or twelve, um, and take it all the way up until they reach the level that they want to. And then you know, it's it, then it becomes like a routine for them, and they know what to go forward. And then when you see that they're in a certain uh, pressure point, you know how to help them right. do it and things like that. You know, so there's right. I mean, quite a few aspects of it that are still not understood because it is relatively a very new field that has come. Exactly, exactly. So the, that, even my main concern was on that is when when I had started the conversation uh, with Gayatri on Insta, we, we kind of, uh, you know, spoke about the research that has been done recently that uh, at, at the top level or the elite group, there's more than 75% is, is the mental part of the game which separates or makes sure that you win matches. So if right. so much importance is given to the mental aspect at higher levels, you need to start working on physical, right? And the comparison was between mental, technical, and physical. So the mental was almost 75%. And only 25% was the technical and the physical aspect. So you have to train more than the technical aspect. So it's, it has to be on a daily basis. But in India, it's a relatively new subject. People are very, uh, the awareness is not there as much. No. And no, the way you see mental training as... Yeah, like when exactly. I say mental training, they're yeah, like... So, uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's a very new concept. So to get started, I feel that at least just introduce it at least once a week, a part of the program, and then you see the difference. And then uh, the, the goal is to have it on a daily basis, like you said. Yeah. That would be uh, ideal. Yeah. Like one of my students, she's over there, Netrika. She's not showing her video. But uh, okay. I, mean, like, I did a few mental training things with her. And then in uh, like one of the matches right before the pandemic, she, I mean, she took the towel and she put it on her head and I was like, wow, it's, you know, like she's really like implementing it. And then the next point she played, she went ahead and go, and she won it. So then I like, you know, after a few days, I asked like, when we met up again, I asked her like, you know, I saw you doing that. She's like, yeah, I know. 
and like, so what were you thinking? And like, I was just thinking, okay, I got to win this point. I got to win this point. And then um, I just got up and I played because I wanted it, you know? So it's right. the fact that, you know, that they are given any specific magic wand or something is just the belief system. But that belief system takes time to grow in the individual, right? And, and I think that's right. where the, uh, the mental training really comes is when the coach uh, takes the player on a path uh, to develop the belief system, not uh, because he uh, knows it for himself, because he wants to inculcate it into the player. So the player realizes, okay, later on, I don't need the coach. He's given me the tools. Yeah. Now I just need yeah. to use it. So, I right. mean, I've had one of one small a small success in that area. So I mean, I just wanted to share it with the other players. Absolutely. Oh, you see, you've been spot does, on in that, yeah. That it does work, and it is a it is a concept that is um, that can be implemented. You know, even in a pressure point right before right. you try to win a match. Right. Right. So, um, okay, some more rapid fire questions. Singles or doubles? Okay. Uh, singles. Singles. You know that you don't have a choice here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, favorite surface? Grass. Grass, okay. Uh, tennis or cricket? Tennis. Tennis. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no brainer in that. <laughs> no brainer in that one, yeah, right. Okay, so um, yeah. Do you. Um, what do you think would be the next step in, in Indian tennis for it to start becoming more internationally recognized? Like right now, we're not really known. I mean, like, okay, so Mitten Nagal, he had some success against Federer in the US Open, you know, he won a set and then his name was suddenly, uh, like you could see the audience reactions, they were like, what's happening here? Yeah. You know? So, and Prajnir's Guneshwar, and he, he's been making some inroads as well. He's been training with Alexander Vasquez, who I met recently. Uh, and as well as, um, let's see, in the doubles, Purav Raja, he's been doing great. Um, Rohan Bapan always, he's always firing his cannons. Um, Sanya Mirza is making a comeback. She had a great run in the Fed Cup recently in Dubai. So what else? Right. I mean, like yeah. these are like the stalwarts of tennis. And we've been hearing the names for the past yeah. decade. Uh, except yeah. Mr. Mitnagal, who is in just the new entry right now. But it's just one or two new players. Where's the rest yeah. of the thousands that are practicing on a daily basis so yeah so i i think uh, it's it's very important to to focus on a grassroots program in in general i mean i can speak uh, as a player that what should be done uh, but i understand that it's not that easy it's easy to speak and then uh, 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 yeah stay stay at home but but yeah i think the focus should be on the on the grassroots levels and focus should be on the junior program uh, in the past, especially when I was playing uh, uh, my juniors when I was 16, 15, 16, they, they always had at least uh, four or five players in the top 50 of the uh, junior rankings. And out of them, one or two would, would come up and be about top 200 or top 150 in singles. But, but in the last 10 years uh, or uh, about seven, eight years, I haven't seen anyone uh, get into the... Uh, I mean, we just had one or two players in the top 100. That's about it. So I feel that we... we we have been doing better before as opposed to what we've been doing, what we are doing right now. Yeah. And, and obviously one of the main reasons is the, is the support system. Uh, and uh, the second, which or the most important thing, which I feel is not having a good national circuit of tournaments. So once I, I feel, feel once you yeah. have, once you have a strong national circuit or a strong regional circuit, then uh, automatically the, the level of players goes up and uh, uh, you know the, you, you feel as a tennis player that even if I'm top 20 in the country, I know I can make a decent living uh, or it's not easy to make top 20 in the, in the country. So I have to work really hard to achieve that. And making top 20 in the country, I know that I'm going to be top say 500 in the ATP rankings. Right? It is something like if you are in the Indian cricket team, then you're sure that you you have a chance of winning the world cup or you know you have a chance of making sure that you are in and picked up in some of the ipl teams so it's very hard to get into the indian cricket team so if if you are getting into the top 20 of the national rankings then you should you should be telling yourself that yeah if i'm in the top 20 of the national rankings then i know that i can be top 500 or top 6 600 in the atp rankings that's how it is in in europe in in germany or in france even if you're top 100 in in germany it's it's a it's a huge thing but in India, uh, 
uh, I'm, it's sad to say, but if, even if you're top 15 or top 20 in the country, it makes no, zero difference because you're not even having the level to make even a single ATP point. So that's that's how it is right now. But in the past, it was not like that because it was a strong domestic circuit. But uh, but I think that this, this is a great time to revive the domestic circuit because uh, compared to the other European uh, or the American uh, Americans, we are in a very good position to uh, get back onto the tennis court sooner than them. So hopefully we have a domestic circuit which can be as strong as uh, it was uh, earlier. Yeah. One thing that I also, I mean, like we've traveled to a few cities to play um, ITFs with Noah and uh, even some ITA men's. Um, and we've noticed like quite a few of the players, like even though, okay, they're playing good tennis, you know, they're hitting with a lot of power and stuff like that. But you can, I mean, now from my point of view, as I'm speaking as a coach right now, okay. So like when, when, I, when I see, you know, I, I can pinpoint like where exactly they are uh, not really playing to their full potentials. And, you know, like usually it always comes down to the fact that A, they are either not uh, mentally strong enough or B, they are not physically strong enough or uh, C, they've just focused only on one aspect of the game, which is like a, either a good forehand and a serve and the backhand is just like a slice or something. Or, okay. you know, you know, like, or if he's a lefty, he only focuses on top spin and putting the ball like uh, deep and with no game plan and he's going for like 20 rallies. Right. Uh, so like, I think over here, the coaches play a huge role, right? It's because they have probably learned one uh, tennis from, from what they've learned in their junior years. And they have failed to educate themselves and keep up with the worldwide uh, growth of the sport, you know? In terms right. of everything, technology, fitness, uh, stringing, even like, you know, what tension to play at, uh, you know, with, in what surface, on what uh, temperature and things like that. You know, these are things that make a huge difference. To, I mean, you probably know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think. I agree. I think, it, I think the coaches need to really make a difference and they need to stop thinking that one coach is competing with the other because he says one thing or like, no, why did he say that you follow my system? Yeah, you know, yeah. like my bada ho, my bada ho. You know, this is this is. What <laughs> no, I, I I I completely agree with you on this point because I still remember when when I re when I started tennis, there were just about five or six known coaches uh, in in Hyderabad and Secunderabad, and there were just about eleven or twelve tennis academies. Today we are having two hundred plus tennis academies in yeah. Hyderabad and Secunderabad. You great. know, and that's it's 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 in, it's great for the sport that you're having so much. But uh, but uh, I feel the know-how for the so coaches is, is uh, very less uh, uh, in this aspect. And uh, they see it more as a business point of view rather than... I understand they, the business point of view is, is important. But at the same yeah. time, it's, it's, it's very... They, they should realize the, the amount of... Uh, what kind of role they're taking in the kid's life. You know, they are, they are exactly. in a very important uh, uh, position in the kids uh, life so they I've should seen be dreams crushed you know i've seen dreams crushed exactly so you have to be yeah it's you have to take take up the responsibility of your position and make sure to say that i don't know this right or uh, accept the fact that yeah this is something that i don't know yeah, so or this is what i can and yeah that's yeah that's that's the sad but i still remember that growing up we had inter-academy tennis tournaments where I would go to another academy and play some sets. But nowadays, you don't see that happening at all. They, the coaches are very scared that they want to make sure that they retain their players. They are, they are very protective of, of their you know, high-playing uh, clients, so they don't want to lose them. So, yeah. so I think <laughs> it's all uh, uh, into that yeah. right now. Okay. Well, we have, uh, thank you. Um, that was a good session. Uh, it was really informative. I'll turn to our audience who are watching. Sure. And if they have any questions, please unmute your microphone and go ahead and have a chat. Mr. Vishnu Vardhan is yeah. waiting for you. Anyone can raise their hand and start going. Anybody? Don't be shy. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Uh, sure. Yeah, as a parent, uh, uh, please, uh, if you can give us more uh, insight on... Uh, how the growth perspective on the tennis. Uh, so to frankly speak, uh, many of the parents are in a dilemma whether uh, really they have a kids as a career to take it up. Uh, because, um, you know, after reaching up to that level, uh, 
you know kids uh, really can make it up if not in the in the tennis uh, there is no life at all so many uh, parents you know when they reach at 16 years uh, 15 years where the time comes to choose between the education and the tennis uh, they try to drop out even though kid is playing you know good so is there right. anything you, know, uh, you can brief us how the parents has to take up this and motivate the kids and what exactly they can see as a career in future so i mean so- uh, it's it's very it's, it's it's a good question it's it's very uh, crucial uh, time and you you've said the age right you know when i feel when the kid is is finishing the 12th standard is when uh, uh, the parents the the coaching team and the and the kid all three of them should sit together and then make a decision on what they have to do going ahead uh, and uh, uh, because i i feel by then the kid is also matured enough to to see uh, he's seen enough on the tennis world playing tournaments so he's also matured enough to to make a call and to to see what his true passion is at the same time the coach has to be very honest over here uh, to give his opinion on what he thinks about the player's potential right uh, one thing that i have seen in the past which has been worked for which has been worked for many players is that uh, going to us for uh, uh, college so that has uh, worked for many players you get an a uh, good uh, education in that and then your tennis is also taken care of your uh, in an uh, uh, good system of uh, training and playing enough number of matches and then which gives an option that once you finish your college you can take some time off from education and then pursue your dream of making big into the tennis so i have seen players who have come back from the us college they played professional tennis for 2 3 years they gave it a shot they made it about 400 or 500 in the atp rankings and then they decided yeah this is this is what they could do best and then they went back into education and secured good jobs but for example if the coach or the parent or the player feels that yeah they have the potential to make it really big they want to turn pro early that's also completely fine you make a decision you focus on that maybe you take a a ba or a bcom uh, stream in india so you are relaxed with the education front you're focusing more into tennis you're spending 7 8 hours of training recovery on a daily basis in tennis at that time the minimum goal uh, uh, for a parent or for the kid to achieve would be to get into the top 15 or top 20 in the national rankings before the kid turns 23 why i emphasis on this particular aspect is that there are a lot of government job openings uh, and the cut off age for that is uh, 24 that's why i said 23 and the ranking that they are looking at is to be in the top 15 or top 20 in the country and this gives a sense of a uh, security for the kid right and that's what as parents we we looking for we we want the kid to be a uh, kid's future to be secure it's not that we want them to make pros and pros of rupee we are very happy if they follow their passion they are they are keeping themselves healthy they are focused they are having a goal in life that's what is is really important and with that if they can secure uh, a good amount of job at the same time if you are graduate then most of these jobs offer the uh, officer position right uh, the petroleum uh, sector is is the best apart from that you have uh, the the railway industry you have income tax then you have uh, customs central excise uh, banks uh, so they all have opened up sports quota jobs so that's like a minimum standard that you have to make sure that the kid is achieved right so if you can keep these things in mind going ahead then it will be a little bit easier to make decisions when the kid is uh, at that uh, crucial age yeah that's great yeah thank you thank you so much uh, it's really informative thank you yeah right good point so basically i mean you know focus on don't don't forget edu- education uh, have yeah. a backup plan and Absolutely. try to yeah. find i mean try to make a really uh, conclusive decision with everybody involved your coach your parents yourself and Absolutely. the i think the biggest thing you you mentioned is to be honest you have to Absolutely. be honest with yeah. yourself because yeah. your life you you're talking about and yeah. uh, it's good to follow your passion um maybe if you think about it, if i take 2 years and just do it and then see what happens yeah. you know but then eventually at that time you will face the really big honest question is okay do i continue or not yeah yeah well anyway i mean i'm sure that worked out for you so because we are yeah. yeah. so. <laughs> great that uh, you were able to follow your uh, passion yeah anyone else have any questions yeah Roman? sir i do okay natrika yes go ahead Wait, sir. So you said you started like your me- developing on your mental skills very late, right? right? So, um, where which part of your tennis did that affect? So for me personally, uh, 
yeah for me personally it was very hard to uh, uh, take a loss for me to digest a loss very late in my uh, career i re- realized that tennis is a game of losing it's not a game of winning uh there are there i mean in in cricket you just get out and then you're you know out of the match so there's very very less negativity yeah. in cricket but in tennis you're making mistakes constantly and you're still in the match you might serve 20 double faults but you're still playing and you still have a chance to win so that's very hard because there's so much of negativity in you and you're still right there in the middle of competition and th- In, in on the positive side it's great because you are having a chance to recover on the negative side it's very hard to recover from that kind of negativity if if someone would tell me that yeah you make one double fault you lose a match i just make one double fault and i lose a match you know so there's very less negativity in me right yeah. but uh, so so that for me initially it was very hard to digest losses because i couldn't accept my losses right only later on i realized uh, with, with some mental training support it was very hard to get rid of this conditioning but uh, this was something which affected me for quite some time to understand that tennis is a game of uh, losing yeah okay thank you yeah anyone else wants to ask some questions sorry home delivery um <laughs> <laughs> okay um sumita yeah. any question no rohan anything No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Noah, any question? So, uh, I have a last question if you don't no mind. Idea. No problem. I've been asking the second question. Uh, no so now yeah. being a tennis being a, you know uh, i could see uh, majorly uh, i think it's not like the earlier uh, what it was the uh, 10 years back i could see uh, most of them you know choosing tennis and uh, i see a lot of uh, competition and the parents also coming up uh, to choose this uh, particular uh, you know tennis as a passion so what do you think uh, because what we see generally is that uh, this uh, Uh, it may be a academy or it may be a coaches they have hyped the prizes where it is uh, going on becoming an uh, not affordable uh, play game itself for many parents so what's your thought on this uh, particular thing and you think uh, anything can be done from the country wise or from the you know the government side for a parents on this i mean uh, it's i think i think it's very important to have a national training center most of the sports in india have that tennis is probably the only sport that there's no national training center uh, and i feel that every state should have their own uh, training center with one of the best coaches i mean we have we have our uh, state uh, funded training center at lb stadium but we just have a basic tennis coach over there nobody really wants to go there to something like a government compared to a government school and a private school and uh, and yeah i mean uh, uh, the 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 rise in tennis coaching uh, prices uh, it it is very high i know some of the uh, tennis coaches charge uh, a lot but they they charge a lot because they feel that they are able to provide that kind of uh, 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 coaching and uh, know how it is it is very similar to uh, how a, how a ivy league uh, school charges i mean when when i was studying in uh, school or when, even when i grew up uh, uh, playing tennis i didn't have to play uh, pay much let it be in school or in tennis but nowadays the school prices are really high it's very similar with the uh, tennis coaching uh, prices also but i think the way forward uh, uh, would be that uh, uh, you know the the state comes up with really good uh, state funded coaching centers at the same time there is a national training center where best of each state are coming together and training i think if this comes forward then it will be really good exactly yeah so this is what we have actually your friend said that actually what he said is true uh, so this is what as a parent we are uh, really under sorry uh, so yeah other than the you know the uh, you know the career uh, tension and other than whatever the kids uh, i think the other uh, huge mental pressure what parent uh, faces financial uh, pressure what we are seeing uh so if we want to go up for an higher uh, higher coaching or where we want the kids to go up for, for a higher level we see a 60 to 70k is being charged so it is uh, really feel abnormal and uh, we always think if the top players like you people uh, who have gone through all these stages of life can give a feedback to the government or 
can uh, you know give your feedback to the state level or to the central level uh, which really you know helps the other uh, you know juniors uh, to uh, it, it really gives help to the juniors is what uh, as a parent we feel yeah i mean uh, i mean enough has been said already uh, to the to the government but it's it's very hard to uh, make some changes done to them we have uh, trust me i have given a lot of my thoughts uh, whether it be to the state or to the central government or to the national federation but there's very little that they actually want to do to to make the changes uh, i feel that that's one of the main reasons that it it's not really uh, improving on the global standards the indian tennis is because there is no system in place as compared to what the uh, japanese or uh, the koreans or even the chinese have come up uh, in their in their own countries the way they are, they are uh, working for for their tennis players uh, so but so hopefully i i think uh, 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 so what is that it is different in the country uh, what the others are doing versus what we have is it at the coaching level or is it at the facility level so no the facility level i feel uh, india is doing great right now as opposed to say for example uh, japan japan no tennis academy is having more than two or three tennis courts and most of the time you have at least uh, seven or eight or sometimes even 10 tennis players playing on one tennis court that right? they are they are very constrained with spaces over there but one thing japan is doing really good is most of the top tennis academies are either state funded uh, government funded you know central centrally funded or it's funded by a private uh, uh, corporate so that's how most of the tennis academies are run and in return what the academies uh, what the corporates get is that the top players who are from that academy play for them in their uh, uh, company matches or play for them uh, when they play nationally say for example i am uh, uh, funded or i am working with ongc right so when i'm playing a national level tournament i am i uh, vishnuvardhan ongc comes up over there it's it doesn't come up that vishnuvardhan telangana doesn't come up but if if it's a state funded academy then yes or a city funded or a province funded like in china it's a province funded tennis academy so when that player plays a national level tournament his name and the province name comes up over there so they take pride in that and in the end they have a, a, a year end uh, a points uh, uh, collection where you know they they compare that which province is doing better and sports is one of the most important thing in showing that yes our province is developed because we are doing really good in sports like end of the year the, the gdp is calculated where uh, in india it's mostly that how the agriculture is doing or how the industries are doing or how much how many graduates have given jobs but they had there is no calculation that how that city or the state has done in sports there is zero calculation about it right so in 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 the asian country the other asian counterparts they have sports also as a major calculation so it's important for the government to be uh, for the state to be on the top right because even even telangana they are they are working a lot on policy so that we are number one you know i mean we see ktr or kcr tweeting that you know hyderabad is the only city or the number one city in offering jobs we have the largest amazon facility we have the largest flipkart facility but we, i never see a tweet saying that we have the largest tennis stadium or we have the best tennis facility or you know we don't see the tweet because that doesn't really matter for them it exactly. does not get them on to the top so if you make exactly. sure that sport is going to be calculated for your state to be uh, on the top uh, of the 33 number of states then the the government will start funding uh, uh, or to put effort in developing that particular thing exactly if you see actually the football is uh, is picking up uh, uh, you know in the last 2 uh, to 3 two, years uh, i think the football uh, uh, people i mean coaches or academies they are trying to bring up to a great level i could see there is a you know huge growth at the football level but uh, i think tennis still we are uh, you know lagging behind way beyond and, uh, to reach so maybe yeah one uh, yeah like forward. i mean i would like to offer some perspective on this i think the sure. fact is that um tennis is still seen as a hobby sport yes it's not seen as something that uh, takes all the effort that we know it takes exactly because it, it's i mean we are spending years just perfecting one stroke yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> like a child will spend uh, from the age of 10 to 16 trying to perfect a serve because of his life or her life yeah. uh, you know so i think we i mean as a community I think if we start changing the perspective of what instead of being called tennis players I think we should be called tennis athletes. Yeah, so I agree. 
that's a good point i agree on that yeah you know, so i think because then tennis players oh you're a tennis player or whatever you're just a player so you're playing it's a oh good you're having fun no but you're an athlete now i mean i think if we start calling ourselves something more then maybe we will be looked at something more yeah so, i mean if we nine of us over here you know start thinking of ourselves in a different way and i mean actually that's something that i've been thinking to uh, help promote via itl so i hope uh, all of us can help me as well to try and promote that nomenclature where we look at ourselves as tennis athletes instead of tennis players i think that this will start changing the perspective of not just uh, parents i mean uh, not just uh, you know regular people who look at us uh, from time to time maybe in the newspaper but right. just, uh, as an all the time uh, so i hope uh, true, true, I agree. that's yeah. changing yeah so that's my take on it and i hope uh, we can start with that possibly so. yeah um any other questions otherwise then we'll okay go ahead mute and talk i was wondering sir if uh, yeah. you have perhaps any sort of creative outlet or some sort of hobby that you do on the side that maybe even calms you down after let's say you've been training for a certain amount of time do you have anything that you do other than just focusing on tennis creatively speaking <laughs> uh, not not many people know about this but i'll share it right now with itl i'm a very bad uh, <laughs> harmonica player <laughs> oh really really oh. <laughs> now you have to go ahead and do something <laughs> <laughs> This, this is actually my my time for uh, practice but but yeah i mean uh, i that, that's I, that's something that i i pick it up now and then and sometimes i go hours into it i lose track of time i get into the flow doing it so so that's uh, that's my <laughs> creative side and i feel that i've i've spoken to a few other players some young players i've asked them about this uh and they mentioned to me that you know i yeah, i like to listen to music i watch tv shows but i feel that is more that you're not doing it right i i want something that you're doing rather than something that you know something else externally is happening and you're only absorbing that's a different yeah, right. thing yeah right they say no no but i i watch youtube videos i watch this motivational speaker like but still it doesn't make sense for me you're only absorbing i want to do i want you to do something do a hobby you know so i feel it's very important that you do something rather than just absorbing i think that's very important and and do you feel that as you practice the harmonica and express yourself creatively do you feel that it calms you in like let's say before you go out for a tournament let's say oh yeah absolutely it. oh absolutely it it makes a huge difference for me uh, uh i mean i'm uh, I, i it's something like i i really enjoy playing harmonica but i don't want to play 6 7 hours a day yeah. but tennis is something that i i i i know that i can do i want to do it for 6 7 hours a day but i just like to do the harmonica say about 30 minutes 45 max one hour a day and it makes me really calm and composed and and that's not something that i do before the match it's not that i go for it to calm myself or something but i really look forward to do that end of the day or you know end of two or three days of my hard training so yeah okay thank okay. you so last question what was uh, what is your push up record how many push ups have you done in a row <laughs> in a row uh, i think about when you were maybe 19 let's say it counts as well <laughs> no but but uh, yeah i'm just trying to think of my record but i just did about i think 50 in a minute in this few days back i did like 2 or 250 in a day uh, we just wanted to this one week i just want to do like lot of numbers but i think when i was growing up i think i did about 70 i think in a minute so cool. yeah yeah <laughs> okay So thank you very much this was a very yeah. nice session um I hope everybody watching took something away from it and learned something new and for sure I think uh, we're hoping that everybody stay safe and uh, stay healthy make sure you take um, your vitamins or whatever you need to be doing uh, and uh, and let's hope the pandemic uh, starts um, slowly slowly going away and we start getting back to normal life you yeah. know So sure. thank you everyone for Thank coming. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you a lot. Have a good one. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. You. Bye.